Welcome to the Classic Car Cake. Okay? So this will be the last instalment of uh, doing this lapping in the valves. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's one of these things that um, people say, oh, you know, it's, very, it's quite laborious to do and this, that and the next thing. And there are other ways to do it. You can do it with a drill. You can, and what I will do is I will show some other alternative ways to do it. <clears throat> but at the end of the day, hand lapping the valves in without a doubt will will create a much better seal than it will doing trying to do it any other way. Um, I don't know if anybody's aware, if you are aware of the, there's a guy called AC Dodd. Now he makes, uh, he, he was a quite a renowned uh, A-series A, uh, engine builder, um, very, very knowledgeable guy. And he actually produces a lot of bits and pieces now. He does, for instance, the zero tolerance uh, oil pump and what he does, he basically takes an oil pump from a manufacturer, I think the, the ones that Mini Spares get or a few other companies, and he makes them into, they're called Zero Tolerance. Obviously, that name is, is incorrect because it cannot be Zero Tolerance or otherwise the parts wouldn't mesh together properly. But the minimum, what, he, what he's referring to is the minimum tolerance you can get because when you buy a pump, an oil pump for an A-series engine, Depending on who the manufacturer is, there can be quite a lot of, uh, it can be out of spec by quite a bit. And what he does is he actually takes the pump apart and he uh, uses his lathes and machinery to get all the tolerances, all the bad tolerances out of them, if they're within spec to a certain amount. Um, the name of that, so if you go to the internet and go put in AC, capital A, capital C, DOD, D-O-D-D, You'll see his videos. Um, the first one he's got on the zero tolerance. It's called zero tolerance oil pumps, and it was about a year ago. I'll put it here underneath or on top somewhere so you can see it. The other one he has, which is referring to the lapping, uh, is called my thoughts on valve lapping, and again it's about a year old. It's got about thirty-three thousand views on it, and what he's talking about, and he does a dry test in this video, and what he's talking about is. You can have the head done and have new seats put in, which are machined. Now, bearing in mind, CNC machines today have laser cut and this, that, and the next thing. So you can buy a new, you can have a new seat put in the head, buy a brand new valve that's supposedly intolerance, and put it in the head without lapping it, and it will leak. Yes, I know that might sound strange, but it's a fact. And so this is where the lapping in becomes so important. So no matter what you do, if, you, if you're if going to lap in valves, use some of these other techniques which I'll show you. But at the end, lap them in by hand because that's the only way. And also lapping them in with certain types of paste, with certain grades. And what he does in this video, this one I talked to you about, uh, uh, that says my thoughts on, val on, on uh, in valve lapping, uh, and he talks about it because obviously he's doing the test on a test bed on a cold engine. But when the engine's hot, obviously all the tolerances are changing because now you've got expansion. So things are not going to be the same as it is when it's cold sitting here like this. I can finish this head off and put petrol into these, uh, in, into these, onto these valves with plugs in, obviously, and they won't leak because it's all cold. But when this engine's hot and it's expanded, of course, then, then those tolerances are not going to be as great and this is why the valve lapping is so important and with the grade of paste that you use now like I've already said with this paste this particular paste I don't think it's that good I don't know what the grit is in it unfortunately I can't see it, it doesn't go down to those specifications and and when I was talking about how quickly it it uh, the the, the uh, grit goes it might be because it's quite high or uh, a quite a low grade, um, as in uh, not, not 240, it's 300 or 400 or 600 for the course, and maybe it's 800 for the fine. I don't know what this is. Um, and that may be the reason that it's not lasting as long as I thought it would. Maybe the older pastes uh, were, were the great, the, the grit in them were much, much, uh, you know, lower. Maybe they were 150s or 200s and 400s. Um, but he, on the test, if you watch this video, please go and watch it because this will explain this so much better than I can. And on the test, he shows 
the difference between, so he's, he's used one cylinder where he's got new seats in it, machine seats, machine valves, brand new and no lapping. And you see how much the leak is on it, something like 6%. And then he, he's gone from one, two, three, and then what he's done is he's lapped it in with a lower grade, and then the next grade's up and he's gone really fine grade, and the difference is unbelievable. It's going from sort of six, eight percent leakage, down to four, down to two, down to almost zero. Now, that's in, as I say, that's in a cold state. So, you know, you have to take that into consideration, but it just shows that actually lapping them in by hand at the end is the way to go. Now, as I said, I'll show you some of the techniques I'm using because the exhaust valves, like I've said before, are always the ones in the worst condition because they are taking the most abuse. The exhaust valve is open when the hot gases are being pushed out of it and the inlet is only open on the inlet stroke and closed throughout the rest of the time. It's, so it's the exhaust valve that's getting the maximum amount of work and heat and pressure and so on and so forth. So what I've done in my particular case, and I'll be quite honest about it, is I've used this other technique which I'm going to show you with the exhaust because the faces of the exhaust were really in bad condition and so were the valve seats whereas the inlets were in very good condition and don't need to use this other method uh, of, of lapping in the valves but I would still say whatever you do do the final the final finish by hand right the way through and you will definitely without a doubt get a much better result before I go on, there's another video I want to mention as well. There's, a, there's an old boy um, called Ivan, or Ivor, possibly. It's called uh, Shed Racing. I think the guy's in, kind of up in his 90s, or he's 80-something anyway. Very knowledgeable old man, and, and, and I say old man, young man. Uh, but a real character, it's called Shed Racing. And he's doing a mini at the moment, and funny enough, he's doing some of the lapping in as well. And, and some of the techniques, uh, he's using the same thing, but again, he's lapping them in by, by hand. But he's also talking about porting, which is a completely different thing, which is just the actual ports and to stop any restriction or any, um, any casting issues. When they cast these things, there's always, there's always bad castings and this creates turbulence and you don't want that. You want as nice flow in and as flow out as you can get but it's called Shed Racing. Again, I'll put it on the bottom so you can see it. Okay, so we were, talk we were talking about the, the uh, valves. So if you've got valves that are in a really bad condition, if you lap them in by hand, it will take a very, very long time. It will come, but it'll take a long time. Now, one of the ways you can get around this is by putting, uh, putting your paste onto your valve and using a drill. Now you don't want to go massively high speed and you want to be very careful how you do it because what you can do then is instead of just creating an edge, you can create a lip on the top of it and you want to avoid that because as the gases are going out, they should flow around it, not go up over an edge because it will just burn it. And I'll go to that in later on in the video. But you can see here what I've done is I've got a piece of fuel pipe which is exactly the same as the stem of the valve. It's not got a clamp on it. And, and if it starts to turn or the hose turns quicker than the actual uh, valve does, so what? All you're trying to do is cut down the amount of time that you're doing it. So basically, the, the reason I'm using this is for one good reason is these uh, 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 studs that are here, which hold the rocker shaft on, are in the way when you try to get the drill in, if you try to get it onto the valve. Plus, you're not pinching the valve, although it's made of uh, hardened steel. So the chuck isn't going to damage it. But like I said, when you put it in the stand drill, same thing, you want to be careful. So if I, if I just pull this and I can, you can see I've just got a little hose there and I can turn it. And this is turning the valve on the other end. I'll show you if I turn it around. Hopefully you can see this. You can see it turning. You see that valve turn there? And all I need to do is just put it up against it And you can hear it. I don't I have to do it, just hold it. I can actually stop it with my finger. I can see it's turning. And if I if I put my finger out, I can stop it. And 
what this will do, this will just save you time because you cannot possibly move your hands backwards and forwards as you can a drill. But you don't need a massive amount of speed and you certainly don't need any pressure. Just put it on and just feel it until it's until the grit has started to go. And then take it out, put some more valve paste on it. So you can take this, I could drop this to one side. And that's the other thing, if you put the drill directly onto the valve, you're going to leave it hanging, you don't want to do that. With this, it'll move, so I can put a bit more paste on this. And there's a... Put a bit more paste. See how easy I can turn that? Get again, in. You can hear it. Don't need any pressure, just in and out. You can just hear it. And if it slips a little bit, it's no problem. Now you can see, it, it, well, I'll just pull this off and I can show you how easy this just comes off uh, with, with the drill. Simple as that. And this is quite sticky, this valve, unfortunately. It's only the only, one, the only one that's like it, and I think it's just the, the guide, or the... It might just be... Oh, not in the best place to do it. My hands are greasy now. There we go. And you can see there's no damage to the top. But what you might want to do is make sure you put oil on it when you put it in. So that you don't damage the valve steps of the, the the stem itself or the or the guide, uh, the bushing that's in there. So just put a bit of oil on it when you pop it in, just so that it's not damaging that valve guide. And you can see there how quickly that valve. Let me clean it up a little bit. You can see how much quicker this works. And you can see there on that. Hopefully, you can see on the end of that. And, but what can happen is you can end up with a little lip here and I'll show you because you can see in shed racing with Ivor what he does, he just uses a little finger grinder at the end just to take that little edge off but it's the valve, this and the valve seat we are trying to mate and have basically a, you know, a, a to zero tolerance for going back on it but, but you want a, such a good tolerance that it's tight bearing in mind when all this gets hot it's going to expand anyway so all you're doing is, is getting it the best you can when it's cold and then the best it is when it's hot. So there we go. And it's a simple matter of just putting a piece of rubber hose and you can see there, I can easily pop this inside. If I hold the drill like that. In fact, I'll put it in front. You can see I can just push the... i just push the valve in. I don't need a... It might flop around too much, but... You see it's easy enough to do it. That's all you need. In and out, in and out. What you don't want to be doing with any of this is tightening things up, putting clamps around them. There's no need for that. Now you could actually use, in the same situation, I'll leave that out for a sec. In the same situation, you could take the sucker off the, off the lapping rod and put it into the drill and try it. The problem with that is, is when you're sticking this onto the valve, it's all very well you sticking it onto a valve when it's clean and dry here and you're doing that with your hand, that's one thing to turn that backwards and forwards. But when you put that in a drill and it's, it's a little bit eccentric, it's not exactly in the middle, it will flop off. But if you've got a sucker that's good enough you could certainly do it with a drill that way. You could certainly put it back in. Let me find the, me find the valve, sorry. There we go. You could certainly do it that way. If you can, if you can do it. To be honest, with mini valves, it would be a bit difficult. As I say, I could turn that and you can see how quickly it's just at an angle. But if you can do it low enough speed, you could do it from the front if you wanted to. You don't have to do it from the back. 
But as I said, I wanted to explain why I'd use both these methods because obviously the valves are in much poorer condition than the inlets. So the inlets I've done by hand completely and the exhaust I've done in this method and then lapped, I mean, uh, by hand.